Could insulin resistance be contributing to your fatigue? Now, I am not a betting man, but I would venture that many of you watching this video have been to your primary care doctor with complaints of fatigue, brain fog, aches and pains, any number of different symptoms, only to be told that everything's normal and you don't have any problem with prediabetes, everything's great. It seems that so many people are given misinformation, I'm making this video to clear things up. My name is Scott Resnick, I am a medical doctor, and I'm making these videos for you. I think you all are really smart, I think you want good information, and I think we're entering a new era of medicine where you have greater access to make the investigations into your health yourself. Of course, I'm making these videos. If you like them, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share. And the last thing that I want to mention is that if you scroll down to the bottom of the description of this video, I've got a link to my website where I'm offering a free ebook on um, a different perspective on how to look at fatigue. Um, I'm really proud of it. I think you'll enjoy it. It's an easy read, and like I said, it's free. The photograph that I'm showing you here is of a patient of mine. Now, I know what you're thinking. I would never show an actual photograph of a patient of mine, but this is something that I pulled off of the internet, and I think it's descriptive, because he presented to my office with complaints of fatigue, joint pains, uh, any number of different symptoms. Now, if this patient were to walk into any doctor's office in the country, the first thing that would go through our minds would be, oh, this guy is diabetic. But he told me that his doctor had done studies to rule out diabetes, and the studies that his doctor had done were a fasting glucose, and a study which is known as a hemoglobin A1C. Both of these were normal, thus he did not have any kind of diabetes, no insulin resistance, and I can't think of any worse counsel. Now before we go any farther in this video, and I'm going to teach you all about insulin resistance and inflammation, it's important that we address this concept of inflammation. Now inflammation is a two-sided sword. On one hand, we have the benefits of being able to mount an inflammatory response, which is um, combating viruses, bacteria, and getting rid of abnormal cells and cancer in our body. But with so many things, you can say there's too much of a good thing. So when we get too high levels of inflammation, we start seeing any number of clinical symptoms, and those clinical symptoms commonly are fatigue, brain fog, aches and pains, joint pains. But what's most important about having persistent high inflammatory markers is that that is unquestionably, and I mean there are thousands of papers to support this, putting an individual at risk for cancer, Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and autoimmunity, like the big five of chronic diseases. To understand insulin resistance, we first need to explain how insulin works in the body. And I'm gonna be quick about this in this video. So in this graphic, you will see that insulin first binds to what is known as an insulin receptor. When these molecules bind to one another, some magic occurs inside of the cell, and the cell presents a, a channel, a protein to the membrane of the cell through which glucose can then enter into the cells. So after a meal, our pancreas makes insulin, the cells in our muscles and our liver are intended to get the excess glucose and put it away, you know, to basically store it for a rainy day. However, what happens in our calorie-rich environment, um, the body wasn't made to see glucose in the bloodstream all the time, and what happens is over time, for reasons unknown, the insulin receptor stops working so well. So what happens to that excess glucose? It funnels back to the liver, it's converted into a molecule known as a free fatty acid, and then those free fatty acids are taken up gratuitously by our fat cells because the fat cells don't need to follow the same rules that apply to the insulin receptor in the muscle and the liver. Now you should know here, and this is where this all begins to come around full circle, that fat cells are little inflammation production machines. There are something like 24 different cytokines. These are signaling molecules that are made by a typical fat cell. All of them but one are pro-inflammatory. So you can see as, that as we generate more fat cells, we start driving more insulin resistance and we start driving more inflammation that contributes to not only symptoms in the here and now, but also contributes to increased risk of chronic disease. What I'm showing you here is a copy of my actual patient's lab results. 
And what you can see here are the two important tests that I recommend that everybody watching this video accesses at some time in their life. The first is what's known as a high sensitivity C-reactive protein. This is a sensitive marker of inflammation. And you can see in my patient's case, his number is six. Optimal, to put things into perspective, is less than one. The other important marker that he had that was off was something known as a challenged insulin marker. Now to put things in perspective, you can see that his value was around 200. Normal was between maybe 20 and 30. So when he consumed a high glucose meal, his pancreas was creating 10 times the amount of insulin than was required. Two things happen. The first is that he starts driving inflammatory processes as his fat cells got bigger and bigger. The other thing that happened is the pancreas is like any other gland. It can only do this for so long. So the writing was on the wall because at a certain point, if his pancreas was required to make 200 units of insulin when really 20 should be required, at a certain point that pancreas was gonna conk out and he was gonna require insulin, which is type two insulin requiring diabetes. The two studies that are critical to obtain to have great insight into how inflammation and insulin resistance contribute to fatigue are a marker of inflammation, which is the high sensitivity C-reactive protein, and a challenged insulin level. Now, if you scroll down into the um, description of this video, I'm going to give you a link where you can go and learn how to do these studies on your own. That's the whole purpose of this, is that if our knuckle-headed doctors aren't having enough insight into what drives our physiology to take care of you, you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself. There you have it. Um, once again, I'm Scott Resnick. I'm making these videos to give you good information. I hope you like them. Um, like, share, comment, subscribe. Click the bell at the lower left-hand corner of this screen if you want to be reminded of future videos. And I will see you next week with another video.